Welcome to a Parallel Project Training APM Project Management Qualification Podcast based on the APM Body of Knowledge 6th edition. You should be using this in conjunction with our e-learning, study guide and potentially a tutor-led course. For more information, please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com. Hello and welcome to another Parallel Project Training podcast. Um, John Bolton's with me today. Hello, John. Hello, Paul. And we're working our way through the APM Project Management Qualification. Um, and we've got up to that exciting stage where we're going to talk about the different types of organisation that right. occur in a project. I quite like this one. Do you? Yeah, we oh, have a big argument about this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Over to you. Right. So, um, in the book, there's a really nice picture that describes different types, three different types, functional organisations, project organisations and matrix organisations. And what you have to do for the exam is describe the advantages and the disadvantages of each of these. So I expect we better explain what they are first and then go through the pros and cons of each. I strongly recommend this question. Do you? It's actually, it's pretty, strongly recommend it. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Really, Most people manage to get it right. So uh, let's start with a project organisation, shall we? Or functional? Start with the functional. Functional. Because most people are familiar with that. Well, Fact. yeah, or... Um, well, Something like that. Most people are used to working for somebody, aren't they? Yes. And you normally draw that diagram as a sort of hierarchy. Yes. So I work for you, he works for them, and they work for the boss. Yeah. You know, so, and and where people are sort of self-contained within a certain function within a business, like they're in finance. So you hear people talk about working in finance. That's department so or production. In, or... Production department or sales or marketing. They work for a particular department. You go into a car dealer, you get say, you go, when you go to the switchboard, they go, do you oh, want yes. sales or service? service. You yes, know? that's right. And if so you, you want go, both, they don't know how to come. That's right, yeah. So <laughs> I, I don't know which I want, but there's not an option for that. <laughs> yes, you know. So right. uh, press zero to go to the operator. So zero, you know, because I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, that's a functional organisation. You get different people working in different bits and near the twain shall meet yes you know a service guy and a, a car show car dealers wouldn't try and sell you a car no because if they do they'll probably get it all wrong and yes. tell, you the, tell you the truth yeah. yes yes <laughs> <laughs> if you if you go and ask a salesman yes, about how to fix it car yeah, yeah if you go and ask a salesman <laughs> about how to fix it whatever clue you no. know all he knows is what colour it is and how really, much it is and how much really, margin he's got yeah that's a really good example of a, a functional organisation yeah, so departmental that's right but occasionally they might I suppose they might get engaged in some sort of project. I mean, let's see, you know, if they were going to redesign the showroom, yes, moving they, to might, a new get, they might get someone from service and someone from sales to come yes. and contribute to that discussion. Yes. yes. And so they'd run a little project and they, so they can run projects, but they're not really geared up for it. No, that's right. That's right. So that's a functional organisation. I used to work in a factory and, and they used to have what they call morning prayers. Yeah. That's right. Where the heads of departments used to go off to morning prayers. And I, I worked on a machine. And I never met anyone out. I never no. went in the office. No. I, I worked there six months. Mm. I never went in the office. Yeah. There was a sales and all, yeah. but I never even, I yeah. weren't even allowed in there. Yeah. Bloody hell. You quite often get people that, in, especially apprenticeships and trainees, they, they, they go round the business. To understand it, yeah. So they understand it. Uh-huh. So, don't they? You know, like when I was an apprentice, you spent I spent three months in the design office. Uh-huh. I spent three months in sales. I spent three, you know, so three months in HR. That's right. It's good, good grounding. You know, you yes. get a good experience, yes. but yes. you know, and then so that's one end, and kind of um, the other end is projects where everyone works in a project. There is nothing else. Yes, the project manager is the boss. These are quite. There's not many no. organizations where. There's only one I know of where the project manager is the business manager yeah, and the yeah. line manager. They, and, they are quite rare. And yeah. he's got his own HR team and his own little finance team and his own mm. procurement team. Mm. But the, they tend to be huge projects. Projects, yeah. And, and they tend to be you know, massive. arguably, I mean, what you were saying earlier on about, impact. you know, is that actually business as usual? <laughs> yes. <laughs> is it arguably finishes, it's not a project but anyway? But you it know. does finish. Yeah, okay. It finishes. It's, you know, yeah. it, go, so, it goes on for 10 years, then winds mm, down. But mm. while you're in the middle of that 10 years, it feels a bit like a business, really. Yeah. So uh, something like a film crew is a good example, my sort of example of yes. it. You know, where, yes. you, where, you, where you bring everybody together to make, you know, Titanic or something. And yeah, you, you've yeah. Got, you know, you get all the stars, you get, you know, the cameraman, the first grips mate and all that, you know. You yes, say, yes. You get all those people together. And when you finish the film, they all disappear again. Yes, yes. And they, those sorts of organisations are different because you don't have permanent contracts. You have temporary, a lot of contract workers. People get, yes, that's right. That's right. And, you, you know, so, and you're there only for the duration of the project. Yes, that's right. 
That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. So I, I think neither of those two functional and project really exist in a lot. You know, yes, not, most not most many complex organisations are a, a blend of those, aren't they? Yeah, a hybrid. A hybrid. Yeah, yeah. which is called a matrix. Yes. Mm. So yes. matrix organisations a bit of both. It's where. You have functional heads. Well, it's, it's sort of a bit of both, but you've got yeah, you've got functional heads. So people are still managed by people who are managed by people. So you've still got the functional fabric of the organisation there. Yeah, the best example I know of function is usually the HR, finance, and procurement. They those functions usually stay. It's yes. it's quite unusual for those to come out That's into right. a project world. That's right. Um, it's then design and yes. and uh, sort of engineering. It's sometimes yes. seeing the projects, yeah, and sometimes right. they they that's have right. their own function. Yeah. So yeah, but you generally get people working for people, but the project managers sort of work across the business, coordinating the different. Yes. So they're dragging together, and there's recognised project managers, there's recognised project management methods and tools and governance and all that stuff. Yes. Yes. So the project managers are working within a framework that's established to run projects. Yes. Within the fabric of the organisation. Yes. So most large complex organisations are matrices, aren't they? Kind of services organisations. One form or another, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's do the pros and cons then. Should we do the pros and cons of a uh, functional organisation? Yeah. Simple. Easy to understand. Easy to understand. You know your bosses. You know your bosses. You know what your job career prospects are going to be. I mean, the key thing is it retains capability. Yes, they get really good at bean right. counting. You imagine a fire brigade, you know, or a, a police force. Yes. You don't need them if there's no fire. Yes. Or crime. <laughs> yes. So, you know, a functional organisation, you've got very, very skilled people putting yes. fires out. Yes. And they spend a lot of time training, yes. they spend a lot of time preparing for that one eventuality. You and know? you work, all work together doing yeah, the same yeah, thing. Yeah. And the rest of the time, they arguably are under underutilised. Yes. You know, so, yes. you know, but you, it's like an insurance policy. You know, you yes. don't need them till you need them. Yes. But they, they're very, very good at maintaining that. You know, if you're not in war, what do you have an army for? You know? Yes. So, um, but that's, uh, you know, is that's an advantage, I suppose, if you need to maintain that capability. Yes. Yes. You know? Yes. The factories are organised that because it's an easy way of, why do they organise that? Because it's quite an efficient way of organising the factory. Yeah. You know, you have. Well, you know who does. It's easy to allocate responsibilities, yes, so you know who's doing what. So they're good. You get very good at doing that's right. what you do. That's right. I went to Dagenham Ford plant at Dagenham once yes. a long time ago, and you know the, the production line was like that. It was very regimented. It yes. was you know there's one bloke just doing up the cylinder head bolts. Yes, that's, that's all right. he did you all get day. Very good at every day. That's you know? right. You get really, really good at doing yes. one thing very well. But the challenge is. Join it all up to get a smooth flow. Well, I think also the challenge is that some people, you know, it's okay if you enjoy that, but if you don't, you get bored, yes. you know, because you're just doing the same thing day yes. in, day out, like yes. a little bank clock type yeah. thing, you know. Yeah. So there's, adva- there's advantages, there's disadvantages. There's no not a lot of career prospect. There's not a lot of variety for yes. individuals. Um, I beg your pardon, sorry, there's, there's quite a lot of career development because you, you know where your next step yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. It can be dead man's shoes. Dead man's shoes, though. <laughs> So you can see the ladder going up. It's just yeah. a long ladder to climb, you know. Yeah, so seniority right. tends to be quite important yeah, in those sorts yeah. of organizations. The longer you've been there, the more senior you yeah, are. You get lots of organisational learning, you know, you yeah. sort of continuous improvement, that sort of thing. So there's lots of advantages to functional. There's lots of advantages to project as well because projects are really good at using people. Focused, dedicated, yes. Focused on the job in hand. You recruit the people that you need for when you need Do them. Do you think they are efficient? Oh, well, we'll have that we'll argument if you want, because <laughs> yeah. your people, idea of projects is a bit different from mine. Yeah, yeah, because people only comes in ones. So if you want a planner, you, in a matrix, you can share the planner. You could have half a day a week. You can have half a day a week. But if you need a planner on a project organisation, you, you, you've got to like recruit one and have one and sitting in your office. And if you can't, I haven't got enough planning to keep them busy, then... You either have them or they don't. They're a bit binary. Really. Yeah, I suppose. But you only have as many of them as you need. Yeah. You don't, you don't have them just in case. You have them just in time. But you don't have that flexibility. That you have no, I take that point. Solve. Yeah, yeah. So if you need one for six weeks and then you don't need one and then mm. you need one for another six weeks, mm. then you sort of... Yeah. But they are focused because they're dedicated on that. So they don't get stolen for another project. Mm. You have that resource. That resource belongs to you and you can do what you want with that mm. resource. So... You can get them to do other things at the same time. Yeah. There's no doubt about who the boss is. Project right. manager's the boss. That's right. So in an ideal world, we'd all have dedicated teams. But the problem mm. is it'd be bloody expensive to have 25 dedicated teams yeah. in your organisation, one for each project manager, you know. Mm. It would just be uh, 
quite a luxury, really. Quite. The problem is, though, what does a you know what happens if the project staff member doesn't? It, it feels that they're being stressed. What yes, happens if right. they're being driven too hard by the project manager who's right. only got one role in life that's to right. deliver the project? That's right. They've got nowhere to go. Well, may not be the best. Yeah. I didn't get into project management to manage people. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's right. And then the the other issue is people can feel, oh, I wish I could work with the, all the other planners or I wish I could work with some other designers. They miss that functional strength that they used to have of being that's right. working with, with people who have the same technical discipline. So, that's right. um and they say, well, I don't want to, what's my career path? It's more like a function where they've got this little ladder. There, there's no sort of, it's not a very clear career path. Mm. You know, you have to jump to another project to get a promotion, you know, so it's mm. a bit, bit, bit limiting, really. So the, I think that what they, what they suggest is that the Matrix organisation is the kind of the best of both worlds, really. Best the Matrix organisation has got a functional organisation where project managers exist and they dip into and out of the different silos yes, that's right. to get the people they need when they need them. That's right. And it gives you this flexibility so you mm-hmm. can draft people into the project as and when you need right. them at the different phases. Um, and um, it's quite effective as an approach because you don't have to buy them in blocks of one or two. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can have, you know, two days from you and two days from you, you know, so you're not, and you don't get this silo mentality yeah, as well. It soaks up, it soaks up availability. Yes. I mean, the, the, the thing is, I mean, the, the, there are some good things about it. The, pit, the staff get a lot of variety. Yes, that's right. And, um, you know, the, the organisation is more flexible. So generally, mm. mm-hmm. they can, they can uh, apply themselves to, to more diverse things. Yes, yes. Um, the problem's always resource management. Um, you still maintain fighting, the skills as well, don't forget. Yes, yeah. yes, fighting over the resources is always the challenge with matrix organisations. And for the staff, they don't know who they work for. They don't know who they work for. Who's, who's top priority? Yes, and Are the they, career path is a bit confusing. Well, I think sometimes if you've got a longer-term project, sometimes the staff feel more aligned to the project than they do to the line manager. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So I know I know organisations where the line managers very rarely meet their staff, you know, because they're yes. always out on projects somewhere. Yes, yes. And I had an experience with, with someone who worked, um, an organisation where I worked, they, they you know, joined the organisation, went out on a project and then left again, you know, never went <laughs> to the head <laughs> office. <laughs> never met their line manager. <laughs> Me. Yes. Who, yeah. who are you? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you yeah, doing? Why are you yeah. doing my appraisal? <laughs> so I think there's, you know, kind of. Then you ask us, well, what's the point of that? But so, uh, I well, mean, the, the point w- is flexibility. Yes, that's the right. point of that is it gives you the flexibility, and, that's and right. um, that's right. And it, when things, yes, it gives you the adaptability really to to change. There's quite a few bad things though. I mean, it can it, people get confused about who they're working for. Yes, and that's the big one. And they'll really. play over it. They'll. they'll to ask the ask the person who's going to give them the answer they want. Yeah, project managers need to be good at influencing because they can't keep escalating things. There's yes. no there's no organisational authority. They're only you know you're not a project manager just just because someone says you are. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. kind of got to earn the right every time. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so I think there's a an opportunity for people within organisations to hide a bit as well. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you find mm-hmm. people that say, "Oh, I can't do that because I'm doing this for them." Yes. You know? But then, then you go and ask them. Then you go, go and ask them. They go, well, I'm not doing oh, that. You know, not doing so that for me. It, it, it all just adds a little bit of extra communication. But um, the, the reason organisations do it, I think, is because it's efficient. Yes. You know, it soaks up all that. Yes. All that availability. Yes. Yes. You know. That's right. That's right. They haven't got. If you haven't got projects big enough to have a dedicated team, then it's it's mm. it's the only way of doing it really, because the mate is a functional organisation. Mm. And I think in real life. Um, you get mixtures, you get sort of some functional bits and some dedicated teams and then some bits that they suck in from the matrix. So you get a hybrid of all of these. So no real organisation is as simple as, as these models. But I think they're really useful to understand it because it, it highlights the challenges you face. You know, the reason why you argue about resources is because that's the, <laughs> you've set up something that's a bit like a matrix organisation, you know. Mm. I think the other danger of it is, is you get project managers who know they want. So they form their project teams simply because of their own personal networks rather than what's uh, best for the organisation. Yes. So you build up cliques and cabals yes. within the business and yes. they become autonomous sometimes. Yes. And pe- per- was- perfectly good people don't get used simply because they don't know the people, the people that they yes. need to know. You know. Yes. 
so there's a, a an onus on the line managers really to try and help that networking take place and uh-huh. quite often see you know big team meetings and that sort of thing to try and stop that happening yes you also yes. need a decent resource management system because if I was a project manager new to a business, I might not know who, <laughs> <laughs> who there is, you yes, know, that's right. who, who, who can I get to do this for yeah. me, you know. And so I spent a lot of time you know, sort of faffing around trying to find the right people, yes. you know, whereas someone that's been there for years. So, so organisations tend to fall back on a resource management system mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. think that that's going to solve all their problems. But of course, it just creates loads more, really. Mm-hmm. So typical exams are strengths and weaknesses of a matrix organisation, oh, strengths yeah. and weaknesses of a project organisation. Uh, I always, I always reckon that if people understand the principles, they can answer the questions. They can answer the questions. Easy. Yeah, it's, it's like I think I agree with you. It's a fairly straightforward question, really. The only difficulty I come across sometimes is people say strengths and weaknesses. So is that five strengths five of or each five off. weaknesses? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the whereas again is a good way of doing that. So you yeah, say yeah. Um, a strength of a project organisation is that it's got a clear, dedicated focus on project delivery, whereas a matrix will be working on several different. Uh, something like that. Because yeah. yeah. every advantage is an advantage compared to either a function or it's a project. Some, it's something else. Yeah. Yes. So you can't say, um, I don't know, uh, flexibility is an advantage of a matrix organization, but compared to what, mm. you know? Okay. So, so you have to sort of. So that, and that also might, nicely um, fills out your answer. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, John. That was short and sweet. No worries. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and found it informative. To order a study guide, e-learning or a tutor-led course to go with this podcast, please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com.